Let's get the show started, shall we? Live from BC Children's Hospital in Vancouver, it's the 29th Annual Miracle Weekend. Yes, welcome inside BC Children's Hospital. You know, this place serves one million children living in BC and the Yukon. They treat the severely ill kids, of course, but they also take care of all those smaller things like the bad ear infection that happens at 2.30 in the morning or a broken elbow. Those things can feel like big things to little people, sure. I'm sure. So for the next four hours, all day tomorrow, we will give you an insight into so many heroic stories and how this hospital is such an important place to many families around beautiful British Columbia. Right, I'm with Terry and Carmine. You guys have been on the docks a long time, right? Yeah, we've been, I've been out there for 36 years. And you? 30, 32 years myself. And you're representing? ILW 514 Ship and Dock for me. All right, you guys have been a great help. Tell us how you raise the money. We have raffles at our union meetings and we have our golf tournament, which is our main, uh, main uh, benefit. Or main way to get money. That's right. And up and down the coast at our union meetings. Yeah. Okay. And that's all. It's all up and down the coast, right? It's not just Vancouver. That's Portman Junior up and down the coast. That's right. What what golf course? Uh, Riverway. And who? Burnaby. Great course. And who won? Uh, we came in second. Oh, nice. Okay. So we all came right. in second. All right. Why don't you tell us how much you raised and show us how much you raised, please? Forty thousand. Forty thousand dollars. Thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are pleased to introduce you now to our 2016 champion child. I had a chance to chat with Aiden Chin earlier this evening. Five years ago, cancer tore apart Aiden's world and forced him into BC Children's Hospital for weeks at a time. But you know what? Cancer couldn't break the deep bond Aiden had with his brother and his friends. In fact, it did quite the opposite. I don't expect my cancer to come back. It's a new chapter in my life. I guess there is a sense of being a child, being a teen again. So there are times when I do feel free. I don't think I could ever fully go back to what it was like before. Brandon was seven years old and I was only 11, so we both were just kids, right? I had no clue. I, I, I heard the cancer word. I was just like, what is that? Okay, maybe I'm going to see him uh, tomorrow. My eyes kind of started opening up, and I was just like, Aiden's not going to be here for a while. I'm only going to see him maybe a couple times a week. It just keeps on going to my head, like, what if he was not going to make it? What if I wasn't going to see him at home anymore? There were times when I was feeling really sick and out of it and tired, and there were times when it wasn't always the chemo, it was about how other patients in the hospital were doing. You, you don't know what it's like, because I've been through so much pain, but I want to be here for two weeks. And they'd be here for six months, you say? And I was sad that there were other patients and there were other children that were younger than me going through cancers that were harder than mine. Basically from that point on I was like, why don't I try to get through it and then hopefully come back, help out. That's what I've basically been trying to do since I finished treatment. I got to join this club at the hospital called the Oncology Teen Group Club. It's something that you can't find out of the hospital. As a survivor, I'm still part of the teen group. There's still a lot of support that I can give to them and they can give to me because there's an understanding that uh, treatment isn't over when you're a survivor. There's still um, an emotional side of things. You have friends that are going through it, friends that are, aren't going to make it through it, and that becomes a reality for you. It's not just over. Brooke was a friend of mine that I met in the hospital, and uh, she became basically a, um, a sister to me. Brooke was definitely the closest friend that I had that I lost. The day before she passed away, I did get to see her in the hospital, and I did get to hold her hand, talk to her, and 
say goodbye and tell her I loved her one last time. And I don't believe that you can accept something like that. You have to, I guess, learn to cope with it more. Before, I felt like cancer was something that was rare, that one in a ton of kids would be diagnosed, but it's not rare, and there's a lot of kids in oncology, children that are going through what you went through, and pain that is um, unexplainable. I want to be able to give back to those that have helped me in the hospital, that have made it so that I can go out there and be active and just live my life again. It's a really good feeling that I could just go home and do something with my brother now. Without Children's Hospital, my brother wouldn't be here, so I'm eternally grateful for them being there. I'm looking forward to staying connected to the hospital because it's been such a big part. Giving back and uh, pursuing the dreams that I have and being able to do that because of BC Children's Hospital. Miracle weekend coming to a close, but what a weekend it's been. It's time to check in for a big total, guys. It is. Let's so it. before we do this, though, I really would like to say thanks to all the volunteers working behind yeah. the scenes who helped us out. Um, yes. You've been yes. 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 It, really, it really is a cast of thousands. So do we want to do this right now? Yeah, we do. Okay, let's do it. All right. <laughs> let's turn the numbers. Okay. Eight. Eight. Zero, Zero. Six. Six. Eight. Eight. One. Whisper their prayers, take joy in knowing that everyone shares their faith and hope and love. Little ones laughing, lost in their play, through grateful eyes you can hear them say. Miracles happen 